Hi everybody, Jonathan here. In this video, I will be telling you my take on section 2.7, which is about derivatives at points. Now, to motivate the definition of the derivative at a point, we have to go way back to section 2.1, where we considered the tangent line problem. In that section, the goal was to approximate the tangent line to a curve by using secant lines. So we take the second point, a secant line is just a line between two points, and by moving the second point closer and closer to the first point, we get that the tangent line gets closer and closer to the secant line. Now, since the slope of the secant line is given by f of b minus f of a over b minus a, where b, and we get a better approximation as b gets closer and closer to a, now that we know about limits, we would expect that the slope of the tangent line to be the limit as x goes to b of f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which it turns out that's exactly what it is. In fact, if you start reading section 2.7, the first thing they tell you is that if one point on the curve is a f of a and the other point on the curve is x f of x, then the slope of the secant line between those two points is f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And then they define the slope of the tangent line to be the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. And since these slopes of tangent lines turn out to be so useful, we wind up defining the derivative at the point to be this limit. So f prime of a means the derivative of f at a, and it's defined to be the limit as x goes to a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. In other words, the derivative at a is defined to be the slope of the tangent line on the curve at a. And they also give this other useful formula. It's the exact same formula, except it's another way of calculating the derivative. f prime of a is also equal to the limit as h goes to zero of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. The idea here, if x is a point close to a, then x is going to equal a plus h for some small value of h. So you can just replace the x's with a plus h, and you get exactly this. In general, it's completely a matter of personal preference which formula you decide to use in order to calculate a derivative at a point. However, the second formula with the h's is, in practice, slightly easier than the first formula when your function is a polynomial. When your function is a polynomial, using this first formula is going to co boils down to just multiplying a bunch of things out, whereas using this formula is going to correspond to factoring things, and most people find it easier to multiply things out than to factor. So let me show you how this works in, exam in an example. Suppose f of x is equal to x cubed minus f of x plus 1, and we want to find f prime of 1. Well, by definition, f prime of 1, by this definition here, where we're just letting a be 1, we get that f prime of 1 is the limit as h goes to 0 of f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. Now, in order to get f of 1 plus h, we simply replace all the x's in the rule for f of x with parentheses 1 plus h, and therefore get the limit as h goes to 0 of the quantity of 1 plus h cubed minus 5 times the quantity of 1 plus h plus 1. And now we've got to subtract f of 1. To subtract f of 1, we simply plug in 1 for x, but since we're subtracting the whole result, we have to put it in parentheses to be correct. So we subtract the quantity of 1 cubed minus 5 times 1 plus 1. Now I know a shortcut for multiplying out 1 plus h cubed, and I can tell you right away that it's 1 plus 3h plus 3h squared plus h cubed. We distribute this minus 5 across the parentheses, and we get minus 5 minus 5h, and all, then we still have this plus 1, and then inside the parentheses turned out to be minus 3, and minus minus 3 is equal to plus 3. Now, the cancel, the, it turns out that we've got 1 minus 5 plus 1 plus 3 are the constant terms, and all those cancel. And grouping other like terms, we get the limit as h goes to 0 of minus 2h plus 3h squared plus h cubed all over h. Now we can factor an h out of every term in the top and get the limit as h goes to 0 of h times the quantity of minus 2 plus 3h plus h squared all over h. Now when you cancel away those h's, we just get the limit as h goes to 0 of minus 2 plus 3h plus h squared. At this point, when you plug in 0 for h, nothing goes wrong. We're no longer getting 0 in the bottom of a fraction when we plug in 0 for h, so we just plug in 0 for h to get the answer, which turns out to be minus 2. Now, I made a program using GeoGebra that can help you check your answers when you try to calculate a derivative at a point. So in this program, you can enter any function you like, and you can choose the x value where you're going to be calculating the tangent line, and then 
you can try and calculate the slope of the tangent line at a, which is by definition, f prime of a, which is the limit as x goes to a, of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. So calculate that on your own, and then you can try and input the answer. And this will calculate the line which goes through a, f of a, with this particular slope. You'll know you're right when you get a perfect tangent line. So right now, maybe I guess the answer is clearly not zero because this green line isn't the tangent line. Maybe I could guess one. And once again, it doesn't really look like we've got a tangent line there. And what if I guess two? Well, this time, as you can see, we do get the perfect tangent line. So while I certainly don't recommend this as a method for calculating derivatives. Um, it's a nice way of checking your answer and seeing that you get that nice perfect tangent line. In fact, we can see what happens when we try this on the problem uh, from the previous example. In the previous example, we had f of x equals x cubed minus 5x plus 1. So I will enter that. x cubed minus 5x plus 1. And the function will automatically update. And we get this nice curvy cubic function. The point was still 1. And if memory serves, in the previous example, we calculated the derivative at 1 to be minus 2, which means that the slope of the tangent line at 1 is minus 2. And therefore, I want to calculate minus 2 in for m, or I want to input minus 2 in for m. And lo and behold, at 1, we are getting that perfect tangent line again, giving us more confidence that we calculated the answer correctly. And one last thing I'll mention here is that the formula for the tangent line is always y equals f prime of a times the quantity of x minus a plus f of a. So you can do this even without this app, always using this formula for the formula for the tangent line, and then you can check it uh, using any graphing calculator.